Hey, if you have an online course membership or program and you want to get more people registered so you can have a bigger impact, grow your revenue and create time, money and lifestyle freedom, then the five steps that I share with you in this video are the quickest, simplest and easiest way for you to do that. Now, I'm about to share the strategies and tactics that I use to build a multi-million dollar business with 1.5 million annual recurring revenue from online memberships and courses. But not alone have they worked for me, I, I've now helped countless others implement these strategies to quickly launch and scale their online businesses. Now, if you hang around to the very end, I'll share one simple strategy that if you deploy is almost guaranteed to generate 10 to 15% in additional launch revenue without you doing hardly any extra work and which will also set you up for an even bigger result during your next launch. And remember, if you're new to the channel, please do hit subscribe, ring the bell, so you don't miss out on my weekly videos where I talk about lead generation, traffic, and launch strategies. Oh, and make sure to drop down into the comments and let me know the biggest challenge that you have building your online business. Now, let's get down to business. So. First, I just wanna zoom out a little and talk about the overall strategy of promoting an online business. Now, whether you have an online course, a membership, or a group program, the best way of building your strategy is to break your year down into four cycles of 90 days, with each cycle ending in a promotion. Now, that might not be a, a primary promotion, and as your business grows, you probably will not run four promotions for your primary program per year. You may have two primary promotions and two secondary promotions. Like a secondary promotion is, could be for a smaller product or a front-end membership, or maybe even it's a JV promotion, a joint venture promotion that you're gonna go all in for. Now, one of the things I love most about this approach is it puts a very defined timelines on your marketing focus and attention. It gives you the time and space to build your list between promotions. Not just that, but also to build a relationship and connect with the people you're adding to the, your list, making sure that they understand who you are, how you can help them, and what makes you the perfect person to help them achieve their deepest dreams, goals, and ambitions. Okay, so now that we've dialed in on a 90-day cycle, I wanna break it down into the five phases or steps and bring you through the key components of each one and what you need to do to maximize your results in each phase. Um, and this will make so much more sense if you can see it. So let's jump into a screen share. Okay, so let's, let's break down our 90 days into our five phases. So these are five sections, and I think really helpful to look at your launch and look at your promotion in this structure. So we're gonna look at phase one. Now phase one is the build phase, and this really is you know kind of from weeks one to six. Now what we're gonna focus on here is, we're gonna focus on lead generation, we're gonna focus on an engagement strategy, and we're gonna focus on your weekly engagement campaign. Now, first of all, the best time to build your list for a launch is way in advance of the launch. Launches don't really work well when you're driving a lot of traffic and a lot of new people into the launch when you're just you're about to make that promotion. So this is also a time to engage, build trust, build relationships and have this really really strong engagement sequence. Now what's an engagement sequence? Well an engagement sequence is three to ten emails that you send people immediately when they opt in for your lead magnet. So you wanna share some personal insights, build connection. You might share your very best content, raise and eliminate, you know, eliminate some big objections. Maybe share your dreams and your plan for them. So your plan for how you see their future playing out. Demonstrate your unique mechanism and really prove to them why and how you're different. So what we have to understand here is that most people have tried some level of, you know, kind of online work or they've joined courses before and it may not have worked for them. You have to prove to them why and how you're different and why this experience is going to be different when they engage with you. Now, how you show up during phase one dictates the success of your launch when we get to the launch. Um, and most people don't get this. Um, but really what you're trying to do here is you're trying to, you know, instill, like, pe what do people need to believe in order to purchase your offer? And really, there's three beliefs that are going to hold people back. They don't believe in themselves, they don't believe in you, or they might not necessarily believe in your process. So we have to start breaking down these belief cycles. And one of the ways that we can do this is through providing evidence. So I always like to think of, you know, if you were in a court case and you had to provide, you know, an evidence, a book of evidence to the jury, what would you say to really, really prove your case? 
Now, the way I look at it, every business has between you know, five plus or minus two topics. So between three to seven topics that you can break down your front end content with. You know, it just so happens that we're coming in here at six weeks. Now that's a nice cycle for people. Um, but if you look at uh, just an example from my own business, so there are five areas that I talk about in my business. Well, we talk about the business growth model. So that's my value ascension roadmap and, map and how to build profitable online businesses. We then, I talk about lead generation. Um, so that's everything from lead magnets into, you know, kind of your opt-in page into copy, how to get people into your, um, uh, to get people to opt in for your lead, lead magnets. Then we have our Facebook ads. So that is the driving of traffic to your, fa to your lead, lead generation campaigns. Then we've got launches and success mindset. So the, in my last cycle, what I did was I focused in completely on Facebook ads and I went to deep dive over six weeks I went through, you know, kind of the six ways if you want to build a profitable Facebook ad campaign. During this cycle, I'm going more on my overall. So I'm bringing people all the way through from the value ascension roadmap into what makes a good lead magnet. Another topic that I ran was, you know, opt-in pages, how to optimize opt-in pages. We're then looking now at launch and then I'm going to talk about Facebook ads and how to, how to drive that. So you can really, you know, kind of, you can tailor your content, but I think one of the beautiful things about having a very defined period of one to six weeks, that six weeks week period is it makes content creation so so much easier another way of thinking about it is what questions are holding people back and how can you get them to start taking action right now and that's always always a good approach when you're looking at any of your front-end content so now we're going to move on to phase two now phase two runs kind of week seven to eight so and and the whole thing is these are rough guidelines so some people will will do things different and a lot is going to depend on the launch format and i'm going to talk about the specific launch format in a little while but let's say this is running over week seven and eight now what we want to do during our awareness um phase is to really start building and layering in success stories of our previous you know kind of um members who've gone through the, either gone through the program or gone through the membership we want to start identifying some key problems that your membership is specifically the solution to um, and really what you want to do is start sharing stories about you know ordinary people who've come through who've, who've, who've adopted your process adopted you know your way of doing things and they've gotten remarkable results doing so and if you're making it more about your audience, people are going to respond to that an awful lot better. And that's one of the reasons why I love sharing these success stories. But be very, very intentional about the success stories you choose. Because what you want to do is you want to call out the big objections. You want to, you know, specifically think back to people who maybe had, you, you know, what some of the key objections that some of your other, other potential clients may have and to demonstrate how they got over it using your um, your process. Now, at this stage, we're no mention of our product and we're not mentioning our offer, but we are starting to build excitement for the next phase, which is our pre-launch phase. But all of this, you know, kind of phase two culminates in what's called the shot across the bow survey. Now, the shot across the bow survey is a very, very simple survey. It asks people, hey, what are your two biggest challenges in the area? And what you do is you, you tell people, hey, I'm, I'm about to launch a program and you know I, i've done a huge amount of work on it it's going really well but i just want to make sure that i'm covering everything and every issue that you may have so i'm looking for feedback on what are your two biggest challenges with the topic area of your of your program and um, and now what you can do is so first of all you're seeding the fact that you have something coming without you know specifically saying that you're going to run a promotion but the second thing is that the responses from your survey can feed into the marketing content and the marketing copy that you're going to use during your launch and that's you know kind of starting in their next phase which is the pre-launch phase so in our pre-launch phase, this is roughly from kind of week nine to 11. Now your pre-launch phase is specifically, you know, about getting people to register for your masterclass. And straight up, you know, huge acknowledgement here that this really is, you know, Jeff Walker's my good friend and mentor, but this is Jeff's based on Jeff's product launch formula. He really, you know, it's game changing in, in so many ways. Jeff is one of the few internet marketer who has achieved longevity in the market. Um, and one of the reasons why is, I, I, and this is what I really resonate with is, it's principle-based marketing. And principle-based marketing will work no matter what the circumstances are. Where, as you see, a lot of people will come out with the latest, you know, tactics and hacks and, 
and, and tricks in order to get people to register and it very, very rarely lasts. So I just want to acknowledge, um, you know, kind of this is, is Jess, but what we're looking at here is we're looking at a promotion um, probably for the first two weeks of this, we're going to run for registrations for our masterclass. So that's where we're asking people to register for a masterclass. Now, the masterclass is, tends to be a, a three-part series. Um, that's what's worked really well in, in, in the past. And once we get people registered, we then deliver on, like the third week, we deliver on the workshop. Now, there are lots of different, uh, you know, kind of dimensions to this. But what we want to do is we really want to build excitement, anticipation, and energy you know, momentum in advance of making the offer. So we want to get our in almost, you know, whipping our audience into a frenzy um, about even before we come and we ask them to do anything. We're going to deliver huge value. Now, one thing that we do need to watch is what I call the content density. Now, there's no such thing as sharing too much or there's no such thing really as over teaching. But what there is a thing is of giving people too much information and giving people too much you know, kind of dense content that they feel they need to go away and work on. What you want to do is, instead of, you know, talking about specific strategies or specific implementation elements, you want to talk more about the strategies because the strategies are what's going to get people excited. And yes, some people, you know, you want your workshop and masterclass to be hugely valuable. You want people to be able to get results. But, you know, what happens is people can see the opportunity, but they might not necessarily be able to implement. And in that way, you're kind of keeping it that little bit lighter and you're be being moved. Because the last thing you want is it, when somebody gets to the offer phase and you go, hey, you should really go buy my program. They say, oh, well, actually, hold on. I've got about six, seven, eight weeks work to do from your masterclass and I've got all this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement that that first and then I'll come back and I'll buy your program and that's the last thing that we want here and um, but we are looking at you know there's a lot of psychology deployed specifically in the in the masterclass so and and the overall the launch itself so we're looking at reciprocity and we want to trigger authority because you're demonstrating you know your knowledge you're demonstrating the results that you've gotten you're building proof now there's two elements of proof here there's kind of proof in your process that your process works so you're demonstrating that you and and your process are of value and then you also have your social proof which is you know the community that you build it's also building the, the number of people who are partaking in your in your master class and all the comments and the feedback that you're getting from it and in saying that you're also building your community and you know starting conversations with people which is a hugely hugely powerful psychological trigger um, and look at, you know, the launch, they've evolved a lot. So, you know, in Jeff's model, there's the seed launch, there's the traditional launch, live launch, there's JV launch, there's lots of different ones. And then they've kind of spawned from that into live launches. You may have heard of challenges, you know, are, 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 are big craze at the moment. Coaching weeks are now becoming popular. Now, I'm not going to get into what all the different types of launches are, but what I want you to understand is, they're all following pretty much the same structure and process. They're just either, you know, shortened, so put together into one, or they're, they're stretched out over a longer period of time. And that structure is the PLC1 opportunity into the transformation and into the ownership. Because this brings people through a journey where when you talk about the opportunity, you're really showing people what's possible for them if they were to, you know, engage with you, if they were to follow you on, on, on this journey further. And it, it, it gets them excited. It tell, and it, it, it kind of triggers that way. Hey, I need to pay attention and I need to follow along with this, which then brings them into the transformation. And the transformation shows them what their life could be like if they were to take the knowledge, if they were to take, you know, your process and implement it in their life. And finally, we have the ownership. Now, ownership is not just about ownership of your program, even though that's ultimately what you want them to do. What ownership is as much about is that they're in ownership of their own situation. They're in the, the power to change their life is within their hands. And if they were to take action, that they can get a result um, if they were to so want. So really what you're trying to do is empower people, give people a sense of agency, so that when it comes to making the offer, that they feel compelled that they can get the result that you're promising. 
So now we're into phase four, and this is really week 12. So this is when most people think of doing a launch. This is kind of the, the you know, the, the where they start off thinking about it. They think, of, hey, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna, you know, create an offer page. I'm going to, to that offer page, I'm gonna send a whole load of emails, and I hope people, you know, buy from this. Now that's very much hope marketing. And why this launch methodology works so well is because we've done all the work throughout the previous three phases before we make the offer. Now, still in all, there is a lot of work to be done. So your, your open cart or your launch period is normally three to six days. Um, the offer is so, so important. So one of the keys to your offer is to increase the dream outcome. So you have to have something that people really, really want. You then need to increase the likelihood of success. So you need to give people guarantees. You need to show them, you know, kind of, you need to show them how you're, who, how people have gotten results in the past and to tell them why they are likely to get success. Then you need to decrease the time delay. So people want results immediately. You need to look at your program, look at your, you know, your structure and see how you can get people results in the quickest possible time. Now, I know there's no such thing as shortcuts. I'm in lead generation, in launching. I know full well that, you know, for a lot of the vast majority of people, they're not going to get immediate results on their first launch. But what I do need to do is I do need to guarantee them that I've taken everything that's out there and I've put it down into the simplest, most concise, easiest to follow step-by-step -step process that will get them the best results in the shortest period of time. And the other thing that people want is they want to know that they have to do it in le with the least effort required. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, for a lot of people, they stuff their programs full of a whole lot of stuff to make it, hey, that people feel like they're getting value. But value actually comes from decreasing the amount of content and getting people the same results as if they would. So look, on day one, we're gonna release our, you know, kind of a sales video um, to the offer page. Then we're gonna send daily emails. Now, as I said, you know, if you're doing a quick launch, it could be just a three day open cart. If you're doing a longer launch, normally six days. I've done seven day launches, but to be honest with you, you get tired, your audience gets tired. I'm a bigger fan of making it shorter. Down a five day, you know, kind of is roundabout right for what I'm, what I'm seeing at the moment. Then you've got daily emails. So your first email going, hey, we're open. There's an offer, you know, we've got this available. Email number two, day number two, you've got your transformation. This is what you can, you know, is possible for you if you were to buy and if you were to join my program. Day number three, we look at the bonuses. So what bonuses? Because remember, bonuses are one of the key reasons why somebody will sign up. They're one of the key things that will drive people over the edge. So you wanna be very, very specific about the bonuses you offer. And remember, there's two different ways you can look at bonuses. So way number one is that it answers specific objections that people have to signing up. And um, so if you look at one of my own programs, Lead to Launch, um, I wanna bring people in, help them build lead generation systems specifically to feed their launches. But if they were gonna build lead generation systems, a good bit of what I talk about is Facebook ads. Now, if you haven't set up Facebook ad manager, if you don't have an ad account, you're gonna be a little bit worried about joining a program for Facebook ads. So what I do is I have a bonus, which is the you know beginner's guide to Facebook ads. So setting up a business manager and your ad account. I then have uh, you know getting started and running your first ads, another bonus, which is a mini course but I break them out and show people, hey, look, at if you sign up for this, you're gonna get, no matter what level you're at, you're gonna get your, your, your basics covered and then you're gonna be able to get started with running ads. Um, but, you know, so that's day number three, then day number four, we might have case studies, day number five, we might have FAQs. And, you know, then you could have, you, the last day is normally the one where you just say, hey, deadline, we've got this closing now, you need to sign up before we, we, we shut the offer down. Um, but remember, you don't have to stop providing value just because you've gone into, what would I would say, offer mode or sales mode. You wanna make sure that you keep running. Ideally, you will go live every day. You might sprinkle in a webinar or two webinars and then also have a number of live streams where you're going, you're, you know, you're answering questions that people have, you're answering objections, you're really reinforcing, you're almost becoming omnipresent, you know, in people's world, that you're, you're, you're just there all, all the time and hugely, hugely visible. But look, one of the key reasons why launches work is because of the deadline. So you need to make sure that that deadline is firm and that people know 
that you know once it gets past a certain time and date they're not going to be able to register for it this is another reason why i prefer to have you know your promotions started four promotions a year and maybe two promotions for your primary product because then what it enables you to say is hey you know i'm probably only going to launch this once more this year so you want to make sure and jump on right now that is one of the things that drives more registrations than anything anything else in your in your launch Okay, so now we come on to the post launch and most people completely forget about this. But trust me, one of the most important things that you can do through your launch and one of the things that's going to make your future launches successful, one of the things that's going to make your online business successful is your onboarding process. The first 30 days of your program or of your membership is absolutely essential in building it. For a membership, it's essential in retention. For a program, it's you know essential in getting results and getting momentum for people. And that's really what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the momentum of from the launch to come into the first couple of modules of content that you're gonna deliver in either your, your membership or your course. Now, with your onboarding, you know, you do, there's, there's a, a strange period here where when you go open card, somebody might buy on your first day of open card, but you might not necessarily be delivering the first piece of content for maybe another 10, 12, 14 days. Now, you need to span that 14 days with continuous communications to reinforce that people were made the right decision to buy, that, you know, they, they've made a, a life changing decision and that you are there to support them. Because very often what happens is people are so focused on the launching, they don't think about the experience when somebody buys. Every time we buy something, there's something called buyer's remorse. We start questioning ourselves. Even if we think it's the best decision in the world to buy, we have some doubts and some stuff creeps in. If you leave that in a vacuum, that will have a big impact on your results. So you need to have a sequence in place. Now you do need to make sure that, you know, while giving people information and, you know, kind of keeping them excited, that some people won't join until the close card. And in fact, you know, when it comes to, you could have up to 50 to 60% of your registration on that final day. So you want to make sure to keep really important onboarding stuff for the day after close card. So that when those last people come in, that they get the really, really essential content there. But what you need to have a whole plan in place to help keep those people excited and keep them moving forward. This is so, so important and so important to the future, you know, kind of success of you and your business because you know, the success of your business will be directly related to the success that you help your clients achieve. And getting a fast start and getting quick results are so key in, in, in that process. So, you know, you need to put as much effort into this experience as you do with your, with your launch. Okay, so there are the five phases of an online product launch. Now, at the start of this video, I promised a bonus session on how you can add an additional 10 to 15% of launch revenue guaranteed with hardly any additional work. And if you stay tuned, I'm gonna get right to that. But first, let's do a quick recap on what we've covered today. So phase one, build. This is all about your lead generation, all about your positioning of your, of your list for the launch. Phase two, awareness phase. We're looking at building awareness of the opportunities and the successes that others have had while overcoming the most common objectives or objections to your program. Phase three, pre-launch. This is the promotion and delivery of your masterclass or your workshop. We have our three modules in there. PLC one is all about the opportunity. PLC two is about the transformation. PLC three is about the ownership. Then we've got phase four, which is the launch. So this is where we make our offer for our signature program. We're gonna have our offer video, we're gonna have an offer page, and we're gonna have an offer email sequence. And remember in there, we wanna be going live, we wanna be doing webinars, we wanna be hyper visible during that launch. Well, at all stages during it, but especially during this open, open car period. Then phase five, we have our onboarding so we want to lay the foundations for success for our new members and make sure that they are getting it. so now let's look at a very very simple way that you can add an additional 10 to 15 percent of almost guaranteed revenue to your launch so you know you've whipped your audience into a frenzy you've built huge reciprocity excitement and momentum you make an offer and there's you know a certain percentage of people sign up. Now for every person who signed up, there's another person who was on the fence. They, they wanted to buy, but either they didn't have a bad enough need at the time, or they just couldn't justify the value proposition. Um, but they'd love to spend some money with you. 
Well, let's give these people something to buy. Now, if you have a low ticket course or a membership that is aligned with your primary offer, and what I would do is encourage you to create a low ticket course or membership that is aligned with your primary offer. I talk about that in far much more detail in my Value Essential Roadmap. Then you can run a downsell starting the day or two days after your close card for your primary offer. So what you're doing is you're building a campaign that will you know, kind of drive people to that offer after they've been through your primary offer. Now this would be a lower dollar, dollar offer and you know, based on the momentum that you've built will, as long as it's a solid offer in its own right, convert like crazy after all the heavy lifting that you've done during your launch. Now I've seen some crazy figures here and you know, these downsides, especially with bigger lists, but no matter what, you can definitely add an additional 10 to 15% of launch revenue with an effective downsell after your primary offer. If you haven't already done so, please make sure, click that subscribe button, ring the bell, and give me a thumbs up. Oh, and even more importantly, please do scroll down and leave me a comment. You know, what plans do you have for launching a course or membership? Drop me a comment below and I'll get right back to you. So now that you know the phases of a launch, you're probably gonna to want to take a deeper dive into lead generation. So make sure to check out the videos linked on screen for lots more on how to get started with lead generation and how to design landing pages that convert. See you in the next video.